Hey, Way fam, thanks for tuning in. We pray that today's message impacts your life. Let's get ready for this service. We've been on a series, and the series is called Growing Through the Word. Say it with me, Growing Through the Word. And last week, we asked the question, who obeys the Word? So today, we want to focus, continue, is growing through obeying the Word, that we just don't hear the words or the commands or the instructions or the teachings of the Lord, we actually do it. But the question was asked last week, who actually hears the word and obeys the word? And number one, the point we made last week was this, is those that obey the word, those who obey the word, those that want to succeed in life, who obeys the word, those that what? In Joshua 1, 8, it says this, study this book of instruction continually. She says, study this book of instruction continually. Meditate on it day and night. What should we be thinking about day and night? The Word of God day and night. Not our problems, not what they said, not the past, but let's focus on meditate on God's Word day and night. So you will be sure to obey everything written in, in it. Only then will you prosper and succeed in all you do. So in this portion of Scripture, it says, get a habit of meditating, studying, and meditated on the Word for the purpose of doing it. So we meditate and study, so we'll do it. And the Scripture says, if we meditate, study, and do, He says, only then will you succeed and prosper in everything you do. Just imagine this. God's Word is saying, in every area that you follow my instructions in, you will prosper or advance, and succeed in. Areas that we're not succeeding in, most of the time, is that we're not doing it right. That means we're not following God's instructions. If we don't do relationships the way God says to do them, they don't work. If we don't run our finances the way God says to do them, they won't work. If, if, if we don't talk the way we're supposed to where the scripture tells us that our words should be no complaining, our words should be full of encouragement, they don't work. If someone hurts us and we're trying to take revenge, it doesn't work. You know what God says if someone hurts you? You know what we're supposed to do? Forgive them. What are we supposed to do? Just forgive them. God's word works. So if God's word works, maybe we ought to get a habit of studying the word. And I would advise you, to spend, this is important, a half hour a day studying the Word. This is how you renew your mind. This is how you, you start. This, this, is, this is how you build your faith. This is when God, you're giving God an opportunity to speak to you about your specific life and specific situations. Let's give God an opportunity to speak to us. Let's develop a habit of spending a half hour a day on the Word. Many of us spend more than a half hour a day on internet, on TV, on so many other things. Let's spend, uh, make a deal. Let's make it a plan. Let's get disciplined and say a half hour a day, at least I'm going to spend in the Word of God, giving God an opportunity to teach me, to instruct me, to guide me, so that I can begin to do what He says and experience the success and the prosperity that he has for me. I believe some of us are just one instruction away from your life just being turned around. God has some instruction and he wants to help you. Now, who obeys the word? Number one is those that want to succeed in life. And today we're going to land on this particular statement. Who obeys the word? Those who love Jesus. Those who love Jesus obey the word. Is there anyone here that loves Jesus? One more time. Is there anybody here that loves baseball? Okay, I, I tricked you there. Anybody love basketball? Well, yes, he loves basketball. The season's over. I'm just kidding. <laughs> but does anybody here, I want you to get this, love Jesus? Now, as we're discussing this subject, Jesus gives us a real clear way to show him 
that we love him. And let's read right now in John 14, 15. John 14, 15. And this is what Jesus says. If you love me, obey my commandments. If you love me, obey my commandments. The word obey just means to attend carefully. That means as you're hearing the word, you're taking the word seriously. Maybe today you're taking notes. You're really at your edge of your seat and you're saying, Jesus, I want to hear from you today. I need a word from God. I need revelation. I want my soul to be nourished. But obeying means is that you attend carefully, attend to carefully, to take care of. It means to guard. It means to comply with. It means to follow the commands, restrictions, wishes, and instructions of. So simple. Obeying means following. Obeying means what? Following. We're following God's instructions. And the scripture says, if you love me, you'll follow my instructions. You'll obey me. So this word obey is not a legalistic term. It's actually a relationship term. What God is saying, if you love me, if you have affection for me, if you value me, if you welcome me in your life, you welcome my word by hearing it and following it. Now, someone could say, I love Jesus. Well, the scripture says, okay, if you love Jesus, you'll follow Jesus and you'll obey his instructions. So all that love Jesus value his presence more than anything. You can write that down. All that love, everyone that loves Jesus values his presence more than anything. Now, you might be saying, well, why did you say that? Because when we're, I want you to get this, when we're obeying the Lord, this is what we're doing. We're walking with the Lord. When you're obeying the Lord, you're what? Walking with the Lord. As I'm following his instructions, I'm choosing to be with him. That's what obedience is all about. Choosing to walk with Jesus. I want you to get this. If I disobey the word, this is what I'm choosing. I'm choosing not to walk with him. That means I'm choosing another option over Jesus. And there's a lot of options that will cause us to walk away from the Lord instead of walking with the Lord. So obeying the Lord is just this. It's walking with the Lord. Disobeying God is walking away from the Lord. The word love means to welcome. It means to entertain, and it means to be fond of. So when you love someone, when they come knocking at your door, you smile, you open the door, and you say something like this, I am so glad you're here. So when we love the Lord, this is what we're saying, God, I love you. I am so glad you're here. It's the inner... And and the word entertain means this, is that you begin to bring out, you want some coffee? You want something to drink? You want something to eat? Because he's your valued guest. So loving the Lord is, is, I want you to, it's a relationship word. And what you're saying, I welcome your presence, your friendship into my life. So when God gives us his word, to read, to study, to follow. There's a purpose for it, for him to build a relationship with us. God wants a relationship with you. Can we walk with Jesus? Love, welcome. It means to be pleased with, to be contented with. So to love Jesus is to be content with him. And that means you find your satisfaction in him. I love my wife. I find my contentment in my wife. I do not find my contentment with no other woman. No other woman. So don't even try it. It's not going to happen. And the reason is I'm just focused on her. When you love, this is what what Jesus said. If you love me, You don't get distracted by any other offers because you find everything that you're looking for 
in me. So when temptation comes and we deny it, we're saying, I won't go with you because if I go with you, I can't be with the Lord. And I value his presence more than I value this temporary pleasure. No, thank you. You guys get that? So loving the Lord is walking with the Lord, having a relationship with the Lord. There was a man in the Bible, and his name was Enoch. How many ever heard the word, the name Enoch before? Well, Enoch is known for something really amazing. It's just this scripture that we're going to read right now, and it's in Genesis chapter 5, verse 24. It does not say much about this man named Enoch, but one or two scriptures, and this one is this, the famous scripture. Look at Genesis 5, 24, and it says, is it up there? There we go, there we go. And in reverent fear and obedience, say it with me, in reverent fear and what? Enoch walked with God. So how did Enoch walk with God? In fear and what? The word fear, I'm scared of the Lord. It's not that he respected the Lord. He valued the relationship and he walked with God through his obedience. So when God gave him instructions, Enoch would just follow instructions. And as he was following the instructions, he was choosing to walk with the Lord. He was saying, there's a lot of options out there. There's a lot of offers out there, but I value my time with you more than any other offers. So when we're obeying God, this is all we're saying is, we value you, we love you, and we want to walk with you. You guys get that? All God wants is a relationship with you. So let's look at the scripture. So Enoch, in reverent fear and obedience, Enoch walked with God. He's known with, by this scripture, Enoch walked with God. And I love this, because this is what God is saying about, some, about the majority of us in this room. You're walking with God. And, and God, to God, a relationship with you is more valuable than anything. It's so valuable that God would send his only son to die and suffer and bleed so you can be forgiven, so you can now walk with him. He'll do everything. He's done every. He's done everything he could do to have a relationship with us. God loves you. And I want you to hear this. Heaven is to God means nothing if you're not there. The scripture says when Jesus left the earth, he goes, I go to prepare a place for you that where I am, you may be also. I want you to think about this. Heaven was not prepared for him. Heaven was prepared for you. And this is his mission. I want you to be with me forever and ever and ever. That's what the scripture is all about. God wants to have a relationship with us. Wow. God loves us. So now Enoch walked with God. Look at this scripture. And he was not found among men because God took him away to be home with him. Check this out. Enoch never died. Enoch was walking with God, and all of a sudden, the walk, he goes, Enoch, I enjoy my relationship with you so much. Let's just go home. So one day, Enoch was in obedience, walking with God, and then he was no more. Enoch disappeared from the face of the planet, and he started walking, and he walked right into heaven. He, and said, so, well, how did he get there? How did he walk into heaven? How did he go into another dimension? It was just obeying the word of God. If you want your life to go into a whole nother dimension of relationship with God, revelation of God, Seeing God in a way you've never seen him. All you need to do is start practicing a habit of hearing the word, obeying the word, and walking with God every single day. Jesus took him home. 
one day we're all going to go home with him. But we could experience him right now on this earth. So now Enoch walked with God. How do you walk with God? By obeying the word. How do you walk with God? By what? So when we're hearing the word, we're obeying the word. What, we're, what are we doing? We're walking with the Lord. Okay? Lisa, come up here real quick. This is my beautiful wife, Lisa. We've been married for 30 years. Come on, girl. 30? All right. Here we go. 30 and a half. We got it. I got it. So now, she represents all of us. And I'll just represent the Lord for a minute. And then all I'm doing, all I want is for her to be with me. Lisa, come with me. And she's with me. That's all this is. It's a relationship. When you think about the word obedience, it's not just a rule. He's saying, come with me. Just follow me. And you know what's happening as, as I'm walking with my wife, Lisa, or the Lord is walking with you? Conversation. Conversation is happening. And as we're spending time with each other, we're enjoying each other's company. I'm speaking, she's speaking. You're speaking, God's speaking. And this is what happens after a walk with the Lord. You get to know him better than you ever knew him. You love him more than you ever loved him before. This is what God is saying. If you'll just begin to walk with me, you'll love me more than the sin that's been tempting you. The reason the sin has so much power over your life is that you love the sin and know the sin better than you know me. You spend so much time with your sin, this is a problem, you know it, and when you get in trouble or you're going through pressure, you go back to your old sin. You're only going back to what you know. And God is saying, if you'll just begin to walk with me, this is what's going to happen. You're going to know that I'm better than your sin. You're going to know that I'm more pleasurable than your sin. You're going to know that there's more joy in serving me than that sin that you've been defaulting to. And this is what's going to happen. The next time the sin comes, you're going to say, no, thank you. I've found a better friend. I've found a better relationship. I love God more than I love my sin. Okay, so now. All right, Christian, come up here. It's a horrible example. Stand over there. Stand right there. Don't get too close. Relax. Okay. So now, she's in the middle right now. And then he represents the devil. <laughs> I'm the Lord. <laughs> so I give, this is what I'm doing. This is what God does with us. He's given us instruction. He told Adam and Eve, you could eat of all the trees in the garden, but don't eat of this one. Because if you eat of this tree, of the tree of knowledge of good and evil, you will die. And all that word die means is that you'll be separated from me. That means me and you will be separated. Your joy will die. Your peace will die. And this is the most important thing. Our relationship will die, not by my choice, because you walked away. So don't eat of that tree. And, and I want you to get this. He said, what does the tree represent? It represents all the sins and all the trees that we've been going to. And you've been going to those trees for pleasure. You've been going to those trees for satisfaction. And God says, stop going to those trees because those trees are leaving you empty and they're separating you from me. Please get that. So now there's an offer. So Lisa, hold on. Lisa, please walk with me. Now you ask her. And you go with, go ahead with her, go ahead with her. I know, I know, just go with her for a second. It's just an illustration. <laughs> okay, now you guys go walk away. This is what some people are doing after church. The Lord says, walk with me. Your boyfriend says, go to bed with me. The Lord says, get drunk on the Holy Spirit. And then the devil says, no, get drunk on that Jack Daniels. God says, come on, tell the truth. The devil says, tell a lie. You'll be okay. I'll protect you. A lie will protect you. 
Lord says, forgive. And, and then the devil says, don't forgive them. Take it out on them. Let them know, don't you mess with me. And every one of those steps that we're, we're choosing not to follow Jesus, this is what, this, I want you to get this. You're choosing to follow something or someone else. And all that time that you're separated from God because of an offer, this is what the problem is. You're not developing your relationship with God. You're developing your relationship with your sin. And then when a problem comes, you don't know God. Not that God's not powerful. Not that God's not loving. It's not that God doesn't want to help you. It's that you don't know him because you've been too busy building a relationship with your sin. And the worst thing about this is that you could get in the habit of ignoring the Lord. Lisa, come. Look how quick she comes. And this is what happens when she comes back. God loves her. He says, I missed you. It wasn't the same without you. And she says, forgive me. And you know what the Lord says? I'm faithful to forgive you. I love you. And I'll cleanse you of any damage that's been done to you out there when you were with the, with the world. Okay, now, uh, um, call her again. Go back over there. No, go, go, no, go. No, no. I want you to go over there. She don't like this. She don't even like this. Because this is like t totally against her character right now. Like, I'm not playing. I'm going with somebody else. That's why I picked you because I know no spirit is going to land on you. And they have to worry about you after service. <laughs> but this is what I want you to do. I want you to harden your heart towards me for a moment. And I say, come. You tell her to come. And she goes with, come. Please come. I know you're in pain, come. I know you're getting more depressed, please come. I know you're getting in bondage and addiction, please come. Everything good is to be in the short of your life. Please come. And the problem with this is she's beginning to harden her heart against God. And every time she says no, it's a little easier to say no. And I want you to get this. This is the problem. She is now loving the world. And the Bible says, do not love the world. Do not love the world or the love of the Father is not in you. This is what he's saying is if you keep going to the world and his offers, this is what's going to happen. You're going to love the world and you're not going to love God. That means, that means you're going to feel distant even in the church. You could be in church and feel real distant from God. And it's not because the church is not on fire. There's a reason you're not on fire. And you're not on fire not because you can't be on fire. You're not on fire because you're not walking with the fire. You're not walking with the breakthrough. You're not walking with the deliverer. You're not walking with the power. You're not walking with your freedom. You're not walking with your joy. You're not walking with your peace. Come on, you're not walking with the Lord. Lisa, come. Now let's repent of that thing right over there. What do you say to that? We have to go in Jesus' name. All right, there you go. Get out of here. <laughs> Thank you, Lisa. Let's give them a hand, both of them, the devil and Lisa. <laughs> I want you to just get this. Obedient is, obedience is not a legalistic term. It's a relationship term. So when we're obeying the Lord, he's given us instructions even though it might be difficult, this is what you're doing. You're walking with the Lord. And this is what God promises. Look at this scripture, which is really cool. And it's in Genesis, I mean, I'm sorry, John 14, 21. John 14, 21, it says this. Those, look at this. 
who accept my commandments and obey them are the ones who love me. Those that went, I want to get, I'm speaking, there are those that resist my commandments, they don't accept them. But there are those that accept my commandments and then they obey them. He says, these are the people that actually love me. They love me more than their flesh. They love me more than their lust. They love me more than their emotions. They love me. So when I give them commandments or teachings or instructions, this is what they do. They accept them. They don't get mad. They don't fight it. They accept the commandments and the Bible says, and they obey them. These are the ones that love me. These are the ones that are walking with me. These are the ones that could best, best, best um, promote me or these are the ones that are hearing me. These are the ones that are entertaining me. These are the ones that are content with me and find their pleasure in me. These ones. You guys get that? So let's look at this rest of scripture. And it says this. And because they love me, because they love me, my Father will love them. And I will love them and reveal myself to each of them. This is what he's saying. If you just walk with me, this is my goal. I'm not giving you instructions to give you a hard time. I'm giving you instructions so you could get to know me. Get to know me through the word. I've heard people, please pray that I'll be on fire. And you know what I've learned about being on fire with God? You don't need to be prayed for to be on fire. You need to obey God to be on fire. You don't feel it, then do it. You do it and you feel it. So people that are following Jesus are on fire in love with Jesus. I'll tell you why. They're in love with Jesus because they're walking with Jesus. And when they're walking with Jesus, this is what Jesus says. He will reveal himself to them. You know, when you're walking with the devil, he reveals himself to you too. And the enemy wants a relationship with you, not because he loves you, he wants a relationship with you because he hates you. So he offers you a little candy like a pervert in front of an elementary school trying to get you to follow him so you can rape, kill, destroy your life. And God already knows that there's an enemy out there and the enemy wants to reveal ugliness, darkness. And this is what he wants you to do because when you walk with him, you start acting like him. And the greatest, I want you to get this, the greatest insult to God is that you and I look more like the devil, talk more like the devil than we do God. The devil hates God, and the way to get back at God is to get you to follow him, talk like him, walk like him, and look like him. You guys with me? Praise the Lord. We're getting rid of the coronavirus right now. He says, I'll reveal. So what is God's goal, Jesus' goal? He wants us to walk with him because he wants to reveal himself to us. I want you to love me so I can love you. And you say, well, can't you love me without me being with you? Of course I love you. I love you while you were yet a sinner. But there's a problem. When you're apart from me, I can't manifest and show my love because you're not here. My goal is I want to share my life with you, my joy with you, my peace with you, my power with you, my knowledge with you, my words with you. I want to know you and I want you to love me more than you do today. And how are you going to love me more than you do today if you don't even know me? Do you think if we just say, I love you, Jesus, a hundred times that we'll love him more? 
maybe. But that's not the way to love Jesus more because we could say, I love you, Jesus, a thousand times and not follow him after we leave this service and we won't know him any better than we know him today. You guys get that? Let's look at this last scripture. Let's finish it. He goes, I'll reveal myself to you. You know what I mean? I'll manifest. I'll show myself to you. I'll come into view. Come into view. Now, now when you know Jesus, I want you to get this. No one can talk you out of it. I'll tell you why. Because you personally know him. You know why people walk away from Jesus? They never knew him. You can't know Jesus through someone else's walk. And that's why we have parents that are serving God and kids are walking away. Because even if the parents know God, doesn't mean the kids know God. We need to develop a personal relationship with God ourselves. I know God and he's more real to me than any one of you. And I'll tell you why. I've been walking with him for a long period of time. And while I'm walking with him, he's speaking to me. I know him. And I love spending time in the word with him because he speaks to me. And I love hearing instructions because when he speaks, he's leading me to greater revelation of who he is. And then I can worship at a whole nother level because I'm not worshiping him as, as, as a story a storybook figure. I'm worshiping him as my friend. All right, praise the Lord. Is God good? Let's look at this last thing. Loving Jesus by obeying his commands causes our lives to overflow with joy. Does anybody want some joy in the Lord? How many want overflow of joy? How many want some overflow? Come on, overflow. I won't. Do you know why we go to sin? I'll tell you why we go to sin. Because most of us are super depressed. And you're looking for an escape. But look at this last scripture. We're done. It says this. John 15, 10 says, When you obey my commandments, you remain in my love, just as I obey my Father's commandments and remain in his love. Verse 11, I have told you these things. I have told you these things. I've given you my word so that, so that you will be filled with my joy. Yes, your joy will overflow. Wow. This is what God is saying. Just think about this. He said, I've given you my word. I've given you my commands. So I could reveal myself to you in a greater way you've ever known me as. So I can love you and me and you can build a real relationship. That's why I've given you my word. He goes, look, and every time you follow me and you follow my commands, this is what's going to happen. I am going to fill you with my joy. A joy you've been looking for. A joy that's greater than any happiness or joy you could find anywhere else. And then he says, then your joy, not your depression, not your anger, not your fear will overflow. Not your impatience will overflow. But this was going to overflow out of your life. There's going to be a joy that overflows. And when people see you, they're going to say, I just can't understand. There's something coming out of you that I've never seen in any person up to this date. There's an overflow of joy, of hope. And you say, where? And you say, and they're gonna ask you, where did you get that from? And you're gonna say, what you're seeing. See, my life isn't perfect. I still got some issues. I still got bills. I still got some problems, but there's a joy that I found that no circumstance, no bad situation can overcome. It's the joy of the Lord. And I get that through my relationship with the Lord. People, church, let's spend time with the Lord in His Word. And let's spend time with the Lord, just follow His instructions so you get, get filled with the joy of the Lord and you got some joy to give some people that are empty. Are you ready to change the world through your relationship with God? Hey, Way fam, thanks for tuning in. I pray that you receive the blessing from this message. And if you would like to support this ministry, click the link below. And until then, see you next time.